Hello and welcome to Back at Fruit Orchard again. Uh, it's my pleasure uh, to tell you something about uh, the Melbourne weather. At the moment, we are in the middle of May or, uh, you know, in the first week of May. Uh, the days are pretty uh, warm, but nights is getting colder. And during this time, you need to really uh, work out uh, in your backyard how many fruit trees uh, do you have and what kind of fruit trees has to be protected from the frost in winter. Today, I'm going to show you about uh, the guava tree. Remember, previously, some time ago, uh, I showed you two guava trees, which is going to be in my backyard, in my new uh, fruit tree orchard. And one has been planted in ground, and another has been kept uh, in the pot. And the reason why we have done this, we were not sure uh, what is the best way uh, to look after the guava tree in the cold uh, winter season of uh, the southern hemisphere, uh, especially in the eastern seaboard of Australia like Melbourne. And you know the uh, guava trees, uh, they're mainly uh, tropical trees and they're very uh, green throughout the year. But we don't know in, uh, in colder countries when this tree gives fruit. Uh, based on my research, the tree will, be, uh, will uh, go into the flowering stage uh, in September uh, and it will give the fruit in, in December. You need to be very, very uh, mindful of that. In the hotter environment, in the hotter conditions, this fruit, this tree uh, will give fruit more than twice a year. But in the colder countries, it has to be looked into consideration that you may be lucky to uh, get two, but at least one uh, time a year you will get this uh, uh, guava from your guava tree. Now, a few things you have to remember. It's a typical uh, Western uh, mindset. When I say Western mindset, uh, you know, uh, in the Western countries, uh, they are a bit cooler. So when when we uh, approach winter, uh, there is a tendency that we prune all the trees, thinking that, you know, every single tree uh, needs a pruning. Do not do that to all the trees, especially do not do that in guava tree. Guava tree doesn't need a pruning, and it is an evergreen tree. The only time you need pruning is after fruiting. So why it's after fruiting? Because if you wanted to really trim the uh, dead branches or uh, the cut back on the, on the overgrowth, you can do that. But do not prune your guava tree in winter time. You can do to other trees like the rose plants and other trees, but do not do that uh, to guava tree. So today I'm going to show you how you can protect your guava tree uh, in winter time. So basically, uh, before I give you uh, a, a small workshop on that, I just want to tell you a bit more on the guava tree. Uh, guava is a low branching, fast growing, uh, fast growing evergreen uh, shrub in warmer countries that can grow into a smaller tree between three to six meters in height. But we are in the colder countries, we are in the southern hemisphere, and that too in the eastern seaboard of Australia, uh, which is Melbourne. And you can consider this in other part of the world, which gets a little bit, uh, uh, you know, uh, cold in the month of May and get really cold in, uh, uh, you know, the in the winter time. So the best quality guavas are obtained with low night temperature, around 10 degrees, prevails during winter. So guavas are now cultivated in many tropical and subtropical countries. And this is an Indian guava uh, plant, which you uh, are looking at the moment. Now, tell me something, uh, or if you can answer yourself, how can you say uh, that a guava tree either can be a white guava or the pink guava? Uh, you know, you have to look deeply in, on the leaves. The grain and the leaf structure, if there is a pink guava, uh, the leaf structure on the, outs, you know, on the outer side of the leaf, you will see a pink shade like that. And also the membrane of the leaf is also pink. So that's how we can say that this is the uh, pink guava. So basically, uh, you know, this is not a mature tree, but the mature tree of most species of guava are fairly uh, cold, hardy, and can survive temperature slightly colder than zero degrees for a short period of time. 
but younger plants will likely to freeze the ground. So guavas are of interest to home growers, especially us who come from the subcontinent, uh, you know, in the subtropical countries as one of the few tropical trees, fruit trees that can grow to fruiting size in pots indoors. If you can see this one we have put in the pot on your left hand side, we are basically doing our own trial, thinking that uh, what is the best way to grow guava in the colder countries? Is it on, in the ground or is it in the pot? So guavas are of interest of home growers, as I said, and we kept it in the pot to just to check. When grown from seed, guavas bears fruit as soon as two years and as long as 40 years. So it's a very long uh, fruiting cycle. The pulp inside the fruit is sweet and deep pink in color. And you can Google on the various aspects of guavas, what can be used, how much fiber it has got, uh, you know, what else you can make. But generally speaking, you can make uh, uh, candies, jellies, jams, marmalades, etc. and the juice as well. So guavas are also in very rich in uh, fiber and vitamin C. I grew up, especially in India, eating guavas every single day of my life. This is a very uh, common fruit in India, which is very cheap. And I can imagine that in Pakistan or subcontinent, you know, people are very used to uh, grow their own guavas in the backyards and enjoy uh, the guavas as well. So today I would like to show you how you can protect your guava tree. If you can come with me on this journey. This is my uh, little uh, you know, display of the things I need. Firstly, you need a uh, long timber stake. I took it 1.5 meters uh, just because if this tree grows uh, a bit quicker, uh, you don't have to take it out. So this is 1.8 meters in height. And also I have got all my bits and pieces here. This is the uh, plant frost blanket, which can be purchased from any hardware store uh, in your country. Uh, I have purchased this uh, from a local hardware store, it's very uh, uh, cost-effective way. Some people, they uh, wrap around the plastic and every day they take out the plastic uh, and uh, they let the tree uh, to breathe normally. But this is the cloth, which you don't have to touch it. If you can see the fabric, it is a very light fabric. It doesn't really hurt the plant. It has got almost uh, feather-like weight and the plant can absorb sunshine and can breathe normally. And also I have got a sledgehammer. Uh, this is a very, very handy tool, especially if you don't want to break your timber stick, you need a proper sledgehammer. And uh, you know, you need a pair of gloves and a utility knife. And uh, I have also bought from a local hardware store, this is the timber stapler, which is very handy, especially if you wanted to wrap around the fabric. Uh, you need something to hold uh, that fabric on the stakes. And also, last but not least, you need uh, this uh, step stool just to reach to the top end of the stake uh, to put the sledgehammer. It can be really heavy. So uh, for health, occupation and safety, you need something which you can stand on. So for the demonstration purpose, I have already uh, put the stake on the ground. I'm going to uh, show you how I'm planning to wrap this around. We are building a canopy like and then we are wrapping it around the tree and then we are stippling it all right so please bear with me here we go i'm putting rubbish on the floor i will pick up you know afterwards i will move the step stool just to be uh, more safer in accessing that okay so what I need you to come and have a look this is the width we need you need to really make sure that the tree is properly protected from the top I'm giving you a bit of uh, thing and just drop it rotating evenly it can be a bit hard to reach the corners but I'm doing my best 
Other bit is that make sure the stake doesn't uh, touch any of the branch, otherwise it will hurt uh, the growth. Here we go. I'm wrapping it nicely, just like uh, you know, if if you are familiar with uh, lungi or the fabric which you normally wear in the hotter countries. We need to make sure that we just hide all the pieces here. I'm almost done. I'm really thankful to you guys for being patient with me while I'm doing this uh, fine job. It's nicely done. Yeah, the top is covered firmly. And I need my utility knife. I need it. You can take scissors as well, a pair of scissors or knife. That really doesn't matter. Here we go. I need to really do first type of thing. I've got the stapler. You need to be very, very careful when you're using the stapler. You have to use it wisely, otherwise your fingers will get hurt. Here we go. Yep, you need to tap it. What I also need, I need this hammer just to tap into the staples. Yep, here. Yeah. You can take a smaller hammer, but basically, so I will continue to, uh, you know, staple this frost blanket. I don't want to hold you back, but please remember to hit the subscribe button and like my page. And if you've got any comments or compliments, please don't hesitate to drop an email or uh, just write into the comments. Thank you very much for watching Back at Food Orchard. I will be back again in three to four months time to show what exactly the difference we have seen uh, in growing guava tree in the pot or in the ground. Till then, please take care, stay warm, have a nice day.